While studying tensor, you must have read about contravariant and covariant tensor. But what is the meaning of contravariant and covariant tensor and why they have been given this name? In this third video of tensor series, we will learn what is the physical meaning of contravariant and covariant tensor with the help of some simple examples. In the definition of tensor, we had known that tensors are such mathematical objects that obey the transformation rule. According to this rule, on measuring any tensor in different frame, the component and basis vector of the tensor can change, but the tensor itself cannot change. Let us understand this for a first rank tensor. The displacement vector from point A to point B when measuring in two different frames the component and basis vector of the displacement vector are changing, but the magnitude and direction of the displacement is the same. This means that the tensor itself is invariant, on which the transformation of the coordinate system does not matter, but the components and basis vectors of the tensor are not invariant, rather they also change when the coordinate system changes. In the general terms, when the coordinate system changes, the component of the tensor can change in two different ways, in contravariant manner or covariant manner. First of all, let's talk about contravariant. To understand this, let us take a first rank tensor. This is a displacement vector. If we write this vector by breaking it into its components, then this vector AB will be equal to 4i cap plus 3j cap where i cap and j cap are unit vectors or coordinate basis, while both 4 and 3 are components along the basis vectors. Now if we change the coordinate system, what will be the difference on the vector AB in the new coordinate system? In the new coordinate system, unit vector i cap prime is double the unit vector i cap of the first coordinate, while j cap prime is the same. So as we know, there will be no difference on the vector when the coordinate system changes, but the components of the vector will change. In this new coordinate system, its component is now 2 because i cap prime basis is double. This is to say, because of doubling the basis vector, to specify the vector now only half component is required in comparison to earlier. So, in the new coordinate system, vector ab will be equal to 2 i cap prime plus 3 j cap prime. It is clear that the basis vector is doubled and its corresponding component halved. But the overall vector is the same. The transformation of a quantity in this way is called contravariant transformation. On transforming a tensor from one coordinate to another coordinate system, if the component decreases along the basis vector, such tensor is called contravariant tensor. The meaning of contravariant is to transform in opposite manner to each other. If the basis and component of a vector are being transformed in opposite manner to each other, then it is called contravariant vector. Displacement, velocity, acceleration are all contravariant vectors. If the basis of any of these is doubled, then its components are half. But keep in mind that only the component will be half. The vector will remain the same. Now let's talk about covariant. Let's understand it with gradient. A gradient denotes the maximum rate of change and direction of a function. If a function is f, its gradient in 2D space will be del f over del x i cap plus del f over del y j cap, where del f over del x is the maximum change of rate in the i cap direction, while del f over del y is the maximum change of rate in the j cap direction. To understand this better, we draw a gradient of the function separately for both directions. We have done this because it is difficult to visualize the two directions with the function. Now change the coordinate system once again, what will be the difference on the gradient? We have again considered the same coordinate system whose i cap prime basis is double of the i cap basis. Observing both the new and old coordinate system, we find that due to i cap prime being double, 
Del X prime has become half in comparison to earlier in this direction, as expected. But in the gradient, Del X prime is in the denominator, and if Del X prime is half, Del F over Del X prime become double. This means when the basis is doubled, its component also becomes double. But the overall gradient is still the same. This type of transformation is called covariant transformation. If a tensor is transformed from one coordinate to another coordinate as its basis increases as well as component, then that tensor is called covariant tensor. Covariant means to transform in the same manner. If the component of a vector is doubled by doubling its basis, then such vector is called covariant vector, like gradient. Now let's talk about their mathematical representation. In the previous video of tensor notation, we had learned that indices in the tensor notation are written in the form of subscript and superscript. A vector is drawn in a non-Cartesian coordinate system. This coordinate system has two basis vectors, E sub 1 and E sub 2. Indices in the basis vectors are always written in the subscript. Now let's talk about the contravariant and covariant representation of this vector. If this vector is a contravariant vector, then the components of this vector are calculated from parallel projection. As we have already known that the component of contravariant vectors changes in opposite manner to the basis. So since the indices are written in subscript on basis, the indices in the components are written opposite in the superscript. In this way, if this vector is a contravariant vector, so it will be represented in the form of components by a super 1 e sub 1 plus a super 2 e sub 2, where a super 1 and a super 2 vector are the parallel projection of the vector a. These are called contravariant component. But if the vector is covariant, then the components of this vector are calculated from perpendicular projection. Since the components and the basis in covariant vectors transform in the same manner, the indices in its components are written in the same subscript as the basis. Thus, if it is a covariant vector, it is represented in the form of components by representation a sub 1 e sub 1 plus a sub 2 e sub 2 where a sub 1 and a sub 2 are perpendicular projection of the vector a. These are called covariant components. Now let's talk about the general transformation law of contravariant and covariant tensor. Suppose a function f defines the scalar field in the x super i coordinate. So the gradient of this scalar field is defined like this, where each component has component of gradient. These components can be defined with u sub i. Here index i is written in the subscript because the gradient is a covariant tensor in which the indices are written in the subscript of the components. If the coordinate is transformed with the new coordinate system x bar super i, the gradient can be defined in this coordinate system such as where u bar sub i is the component of gradient in the new coordinate system. If u bar sub i expands through the chain rule, it will be equal to this. Now with the help of Einstein summation convention, it can be written like this. Note here that del f over del x super r will be equal to u sub r, which is the component of the gradient in x super i coordinate. It describes the transformation of gradient from one coordinate to another coordinate where u bar sub i is the component of the gradient in the x bar super i coordinate, u sub r is the component of the gradient in the x super i coordinate, and del x super r over del x bar super i is representing the transformation from one coordinate to another coordinate system. In general, if u is a rank 1 covariant tensor, whose u sub i is the component in the x super i coordinate, while u bar sub i is the component in the x bar super i coordinate, then the transformation in both coordinate system is given by this law. Now let's talk about the transformation of contravariant tensor. 
Suppose v is the velocity in a coordinate system x super i, whose components are represented by v super i. Here we have written the index i in the superscript of the velocity because velocity is a contravariant tensor in which indices are written in the superscript of components. If the coordinate system transform to the new coordinate system x bar super i, the velocity component can be represented by v bar super i in this coordinate. If v bar super i is expanded from the chain rule and with the help of Einstein summation convention, it will be equal to this. Notice here that del x super r over del t will be equal to v super r which is the component of velocity in the x super i coordinate system. This is representing the conversion of velocity component from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. In general, if v is a rank 1 contravariant tensor which has component v super i in x super i coordinate and component v bar super i in x bar super i coordinate, then the transformation rule in both the coordinate system form this flaw. Let's summarize all these. Covariant means in the same manner, whereas contravariant means in the opposite manner. If the basis and component in a tensor are transforming in the same manner, then they are called covariant tensor. But if the basis and component of a tensor is being transformed in opposite manner, then they are called contravariant tensor. Indices in covariant tensor are written in the subscript of the components, whereas in those which are contravariant tensor, indices are written in the superscript of the component. The gradient is a covariant tensor, while the displacement, velocity and acceleration are the contravariant tensor. The transformation rule for covariant and contravariant tensor is given by this way.